if you're a finance major, you may find accounting to be sort of this necessary evil for getting your business degree. Um, also true if you're a marketing or a management major. But the financial statements are useful sources of information. And in courses like investments or even in corporate finance, we're not really interested in some of these financial statements for the sake of doing accounting work. We're interested in using them to analyze a company, to determine their financial position. And in a coming tutorials, we'll talk about doing things like financial ratio analysis. But let's look at the basic, the two basic financial statements that you, that you use most commonly, which are the balance sheet. The balance sheet oftentimes is referred to as a photograph or a snapshot. That is, you add up the amount of money. You'll notice from this um, PowerPoint slide I have here, on December 31st of 2009, and 2010, this company had a certain amount of money, which is in millions of dollars, in their account. And the way the balance sheet works is it looks at your assets and your liabilities and owner's equity. Owner's equity being whatever um, asset, you take the assets and you subtract out what you owe people, the liabilities, and that's what belongs to the owners. Okay? So oftentimes you hear about home equity. Okay, equity in your house. You have, you have a house that's worth four hundred thousand dollars. You owe eighty thousand dollars on the mortgage, so you have three hundred and twenty thousand dollars in equity. So, the first thing about the balance sheet that we should note is it's called a balance sheet because it has to balance total assets down here in two thousand and nine, two thousand seven hundred and fifty six. Okay, and that's in millions, so that would actually be two billion seven hundred fifty-six million. Has to equal the amount of total liabilities and owner's equity. It balances. You'll notice for two thousand and ten, it's three thousand one hundred and twelve. It's also three thousand one hundred and twelve on the total liabilities and owner's equity side. So it has to balance. The way the balance sheet is laid out is that we start with the most liquid assets, cash being the most liquid, it's already cash, and then accounts receivable, inventory, and then we move to fixed assets. We move to, you know, plant and equipment, okay, land, things like this. This is a simplified balance sheet. We'll take a look at um, a real financial statement from Morningstar, so you can see that it looks a little more complicated, but it basically follows this format. On the liability side, we have accounts payable, notes payable, we could have taxes payable, and then we have the longer term liabilities, long term debt, and then you have owner's equity, retained earnings, etc. Okay, let me jump to the to the income statement. Okay, most of this should be somewhat familiar to you. The income statement is something we'll use a lot in investments as well as in corporate finance. And what this does is oftentimes this is referred to as a movie, a video, because it shows not a snapshot in time. If you look at the balance sheet, we can see how much money you have in the bank on December 31st of 2009. When it comes to selling stuff, we don't look at how much you sold on December 31st, 2009. We look at how much you sold from January 1st of 2009 till December 31st of 2009. We're looking at what you did over an entire year or an entire quarter. So you have a certain amount of net sales, okay? You're selling your goods, okay? You're getting money for it. Sometimes on balance or income statements that you see, it'll say net revenues, okay? Same thing, okay? Cost of goods sold. So you know, what are the raw materials? What does that stuff cost to produce? You'll subtract out depreciation and we get earnings before interest and taxes. Again, when we look at a real financial statement of a real company, they'll have more things in here. They won't just have cost of goods sold. They'll have sales and general administrative expenses. They'll have a bunch of other things. But this is a simplified one just for you to get an understanding. We get earnings before interest and taxes, sometimes abbreviated EBIT. Okay, so, um, we subtract out any interest paid because interest is tax deductible to the firm. 
then we get taxable income and then we can compute taxes okay I'm not sure what the tax rate is it looks like the tax rate is 30 percent so you take the tax rate and you multiply it times taxable income you get the amount of taxes and you subtract taxes from taxable income you get net income okay that's what's left over after you've paid off your suppliers depreciated your um, your equipment okay paid your interest payments paid your taxes etc and then once you have this amount of net income you have to decide what to do with it do we divide it do we pay it as dividends or we do we add it to retained earnings all right let's try and look at a real financial statement here let's see if I have that up here if you go to morningstar.com we can take a look at for example Apple and if you type in AAPL on the Morningstar site you can click down here financials and they give you snapshots of the right here we're looking at the income statement we can click on the balance sheet as well as the cash flow statement you can see they have revenue they call it cost of revenue instead of cost of goods sold and then they subtract out so they have gross profit they subtract this from this and then they have other expenses research and development costs sales and general administrative expenses and then they call this total operating expenses and then they have operating income okay so it's a little more complicated they've added in some stuff other expenses income before taxes provision for income so it's a, it's a bit more complicated than the simple one you see in the um, in the textbook version okay if we look at the balance sheet you'll see again it's a bit more complicated they have more things in here cash and cash equivalents they call it they may have some short-term investments they also have receivables inventories deferred income taxes prepaid expenses but these are all what we call t current assets assets that um, are expected to be turned into cash within the year then they have their non-current assets in the textbook version the PowerPoint slide I showed you we refer to those as fixed assets plant and equipment property etc things like goodwill but again this has to balance total assets 25 347 has to equal the liabilities and equity which is 25 347 here they have accounts payable taxes payable accrued liability so they have more lines here but the idea is the same you have current as current liabilities you have non-current liabilities down here deferred taxes deferred revenues and then you have equity um, stockholders equity you know, retained earning paid in additional paid in capital etc so a little more complicated there's more detail to it but it's the same basic idea and it's really important for you to get an understanding of these financial statements because this is how you're going to analyze a company this is the company is providing you with information that you can use to decide how healthy are they how much how much cash do they have well they have a lot of cash you know how much long-term debt do they have let's see um, they don't have other long-term liabilities you know they have very little okay this is a company that doesn't have really any or very very little long-term debt but has a lot of cash so they're in a good financial position okay if, if any of us are running the company and we make a few mistakes the company's still going to be here because they're not in any they they haven't used too much debt and so they're in a good strong financial position so Looking at the balance sheet and the income statement can be a good way to get started in terms of analyzing a company. We can do more by looking at financial ratios to get an even better picture of the company, but this is a good place to start.